The bike is superbly well prepared. They've got a terrific team there. And he's a two-time Suzuka four-hour winner here, which, of course, is run on 600. So he really knows his way around. Yeah, absolutely. Keep an eye on Kazma Daniel as well. But I'll tell you what, let's go down to Wheeling. She's on the uh, grid, and she's going to speak to some of our riders. Thank you, Stephen. Barry down here now in the Super Sport 600 CC grid where uh, current championship leader Pia Pong Bunlet will start from P1. Pia Pong, you have a lot of experience racing here on the R6 with, the, with your double win in the Suzuka 4 hours. So are you more relaxed and comfortable here this weekend? Yeah, for this Lao East Suzuka, I think this is a one of very hard circuit and I think I have I have to talk with the team and setting really good uh, today. I feel very confident. I will try my best. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Pia Pong. All the best for the first race. And starting alongside Pia Pong is a wild card here this weekend, Soichiro Minamimoto. So Minamimoto, your first race uh, here this weekend with ARC, starting on the front row. How are you feeling? Yeah, so I'm so happy and uh, uh, start this race uh, from first round, uh, pushing hard. Uh, I aim, aim to win, yes. <laughs> okay, good luck, uh, Minamimoto. And completing the front row is Malaysian rider Kasma Daniel. Kasma, just a quick word uh, before we let you go. Starting on the front row alongside all the Yamahas, how are you feeling for the first race? For this first race, I will make a good race and I will try my best to get the podium. Yes, All right, yes, thank yes. you. So we're going to get off the starting grid and I'm going to send it back to Steve and Barry in the studio. Thanks, Wheeling, for that down there. It's always good to hear from her and uh, she'd certainly get some uh, good information out of those riders, uh, last minute information. Always uh, good to hear what's on their minds as they're about to start a race. So. Uh, as we get this one underway, of course, uh, 10 laps around the Suzuka circuit. Everything amps up when you've got more cylinders. It's uh, going to be definitely one to watch. What do you think about Adam Norodin? He was so strong last time out. Yeah, he was. Uh, however, this is his first trip to Suzuka. So uh, he hasn't got the uh, track experience that uh, Kazma Daniel got and, of, of course, Pirapong. One of the uh, wild cards, of course, to Arakawa. 600s uh, racing very strong here in Japan. So there's quite a few wild cards uh, strewn throughout this grid and as we've seen we've got one on the front row of the grid so it's going to be interesting to see Ahmad a fifth Amran a good result for him uh, qualifying in sixth position yeah he's been improving all year hasn't he we've been really impressed with uh, the progress that he's been making and uh, that was good qualifying for him I'm not sure about his experience at this circuit but uh, he got around there pretty well uh, this morning. Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, been some tricky conditions as well. Of course, there was a, a lot of rain uh, on Thursday. The riders didn't touch the track on Thursday, but it meant that, uh, it, that we've had damp patches uh, throughout the weekend to contend with as well. So uh, if you're learning the circuit here at Suzuka, not an ideal weekend in reality to be doing that. It hasn't been an easy running weekend. In fact, on Friday, we had 28 crashes. Yeah, we did, and four red flags. Uh, yeah. So hopefully we got all the uh, all the bad stuff out of the way yesterday. There were a few knocks, nothing serious. Uh, we uh, we were missing uh, Chow Vietnam on the uh, AP250 grid because he had suspected concussion, but uh, he was walking around and supporting the team in the in the paddock this well, morning. Well, he was looking more disappointed than anything. Was yeah, he? he was gutted. Yeah, but. Can anybody beat Pirapong? Can he get six out of seven out of uh, seven? That is the question on my mind. Well, people have been talking about the pressure on Pirapong. Can he do it? Can he do it? Please. Honestly, I think the situation is reversed. I think he's put the pressure back onto his rivals because they just don't know how to beat him. Well, they're getting closer. I think uh, last time out, Adam Moradin uh, certainly gave it a good crack. As we have a look at the starting grid for the 600 Super Sports, it is that uh, Thailand Tama Yamaha racing team, Pirapon Boonalert from pole. Minamoto in second, and Kazma Daniel, another good uh, chance in third. Adam Moradin was so fast last time out. Uh, Kota Arakawa, fifth. Six is uh, Amit Afif Amran starting uh, on his Yamaha YZF R6. And uh, row three is on the Battle Factory Honda is a Yuta Sano. 
Another wild card next to him, Matt Akuda, and then ninth is uh, Ramdan Rosley. Tenth on the grid, Kritchipoorn, who uh, was so good in the 250s last year. Azroy Hakim in 11th and 12th is uh, Andy Farad Azadar for the Astra Honda Racing Team, having a good ride here this weekend for him too. 13th on the grid, we will be looking at uh, Sano, another Japanese rider. So good to see Sano getting a good result uh, out there for him. So many wild cards up there. Really looking forward to seeing um, them. And uh, it's uh, Rostam is the next uh, for the X10K TKART. So uh, really looking forward to seeing those guys uh, out on the grid. Of course, uh, in 13th position, it's uh, Sano, as we said, Rostam, and then uh, Reza Danica Renz, so good on the 250 last year, starts in 15th. Uh, Javier Alana Malloy, keep an eye on him. He's managed to pull something special out of the hat every now and then. Pass a bit thicker of our up on the number one, two, three machine. And of course, Helmi Asman, how fast can he be on his day? Ray Tashima from 19th. Liam Taylor McDonald for the Victor Racing Team starts out of 20th. And 21st, the biggest field we've had in a long time is uh, that uh, last uh, qualify, Mame Sai. So really looking forward to uh, getting those guys and this race out on track and underway. Yeah, and while uh, Pirapong seems to have outsiked uh, the, the ARC regulars, that isn't the case with uh, Sachiro Minimamoto. Well, I would think that these Japanese wildcards will have had a lot of hard fighting over the years and throughout the year, especially at tracks like this. So. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's going to want to finish second or third. That is for sure. Yeah. Nothing to lose for him. Absolutely. And uh, so Chiro, he has got ARRC experience. Uh, I think maybe last year or the year before he was in the 250s. And I think he rode a 600 at some stage. But he's a regular in the JSB series. And that is a that is a badass hard series. Well, there's even more reason for him to want to win here today, especially if he's been in the championship out. He wants to show what he can do. So keep an eye on that yellow machine uh, starting uh, in second uh, position on the grid. So uh, really looking forward to uh, seeing what he can do out there. Of course, uh, Adam Norodin, you can never count him out. We know what he can do. He is uh, definitely a rider to keep an eye on. Red flag is out at the front. The green flag is waving. We are getting ready for a start now. And uh, we are almost in starter's hands. 10 laps around this Suzuka circuit. This is going to be a good one. And they're away. And as always, Pirapong gets a good start off the line. Keep an eye on Kazma Daniel though. Kazma Daniel is even better. No, he hasn't. Pirapong sweeps across the front as they head into turn one. The Japanese wildcard's already nipping up the inside and takes uh, Adam Noradin moving into third. We've got a crasher at the back of the field too. Two guys down there. Looks like they're both up and okay. Didn't quite catch a number of those, Barry, but uh, I'm sure we'll find out in due course. Yeah. Well, that's uh, one of the... Uh, is that Helmi Asman that's gone down? I don't want to say it too soon, but it could have been. Hopefully not, but he was near the, uh, the back of the grid, but the main thing is both riders were up. Pirapong already out front at the moment, uh, as uh, expected. Going to try and win seven out of seven. Hasn't been done for 14 years. Can he do it? Da Kazma Daniel sits uh, right behind him. Will be uh, making it uh, an impossibility if he can. Yeah, Kazma having a nibble at him. And uh, Adam Norodin in third place. I think I can just see, yep. Yeah, well, Adam Norodin's got uh, battles of his own with the uh, Japanese uh, wild card at the moment. Uh, all sorts of uh, problems for him. Minamoto causing, uh, make, trying to make his way through, but then uh, falling back. So Adam Norodin now has uh, got uh, work to do to catch up to that uh, leading bunch. At uh, the last round in the Chang International Raceway, Adam Norodin was on fire. Can he do it again? Yep, let's see. First time out here. Pira Pong, mate, as he's been all year long, he's uh, absolutely perfect uh, at the moment. Hasn't put a, a foot wrong. Uh, I mean, that bike just looks absolutely sensational. As he tips in, I honestly don't recall him having any incidences this year, even in practice. I don't think he's had one crash. He had a tumble in qualifying at Sepang. Um, well, a, a little one. And 
and he's had this is his second pole out of four starts but honestly when it comes when it comes to race day he's so together he's it, come under pressure as you say from from adam from kazma from one or two other riders but uh, he's here's, absorbed it every time here's the crash now yeah that was that could have been uh could have been uh, Helmy Asman. He still didn't quite catch the numbers that who those two riders were. But uh, anyway, we'll hopefully find out. But it certainly looked like one of the Masashi Boone Siu Honda racing team machines. Yeah, Futura Minimamoto. Ahead there of uh, Adam Noradin. Yeah, so he's. see what he can do. Yeah, he's making his way forward again. Uh, on the Honda, we've got another faller there too. I just saw at the uh, back of the uh, pack. Uh, that could have been um, Yuto Sano that went down, but uh, we will let you know. Looked like the person at about fifth position, which was Yuto at that point in time. So uh, we will let you know when we see uh, who that is. But uh, meanwhile, back out front, uh, Pirapong is the one putting the pressure on as per normal. Kazma Daniel Lowe seems to be doing a good job at hanging in there. Yeah, he is doing a good job. Uh, this looks really familiar, Steve. Pirapong absorbing some pressure going about his business. Well, he's done more than absorbed it. He's absorbed it, and he's spat it back out at the rest of the pack. That's what he's done. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly I right. I want to keep an eye, though, on the gap between third and Pirapong out front. If uh, Pirapong can... Uh, if, sorry, if this man, Minamoto, he seems to be, I guess, the wild card, the one that could do something. If he can get his act together now, uh, there's still plenty of time to pull in that uh, gap of about one and a half seconds. Uh, to the leader, but uh, I'll tell you what, it's, it's going to be hard, but uh, he's got the most to prove out of everyone. Yeah, he has, and let's have a look at the lap time when he's when he's completed this lap, because he was uh, working hard last time around, he did a 2.15. Uh, Pirapong has got the fastest lap, no surprise there, 2.14.1. Of course, qualifying was 2.13.2 uh, for Pirapong, so that just puts it in perspective. Uh, Tyre-wise, they uh, do have a softer tyre in qualifying, so uh, that's a lap time that he did first time round. He's already on a 2.13.4. That's very, very impressive by Pirapong. And uh, matching Kazma Danielle, good job. Yep. Uh, Minamoto has also done a great lap, 2.13.4. Able to, in fact... So that is the fastest lap. Yeah, he was so the far. fastest lap so far, but uh, he's got to do better than a catch by a hundredth a lap, or he's uh, definitely going to miss out. But uh, that man on the number 22, if he can get his act together, he's definitely going to have an opportunity here. Well, we've got some distance to go yet. At the front, I believe uh, Pirapong's trying to break Kazma's heart. Yeah, he certainly is. And uh, he's good at it, though, isn't he? That's what Pirapong does. Pirapong will, will settle in. Uh, he'll just sit there, and he'll each he'll go away at point one of a second a lap. That's what he does best. Yeah, yeah. He just frustrates the hell out of the uh, his his leading rivals. But let's see, let's see what Kazma can do. He's a quality rider. Well, in Thailand, we saw the colour story uh, about Pirapong and his training regime. And I, I'm a believer that. Uh, his training is, is getting him to do what he's doing right now. He really does. He does um, the Thai kickboxing, uh, lots of different stuff. But he does it uh, for half a day every day. And he pushes himself through that pain barrier, through uh, physical barriers, mental barriers. And that's why he's such a perfect rider now. I agree with you, Steve. That is the thing about uh, martial arts training or, uh, or even Western boxing. It does do that to you. People who haven't done it don't really understand how hard it is and what you have to go through to uh, actually come through and win. But, uh, yeah, you're right. That's uh, Pirapong's regime. Well, certainly working for him and putting a big smile on his face uh, most Saturday and Sunday afternoons, especially uh, at, when it's uh, Asia Road Racing Championship uh, weekends. Yeah, so we've got a gap now between uh, Minimamoto and... Uh, and Adam Noradin in fourth position. Well, it's going to be interesting to see um, about that uh, the gap between the number 26 as he heads over the line now. Uh, Yamaha Thailand Racing Team's Pirapong goes across and does a 213.4. That's two 13.4s in a row for him. And uh, 213.6 for um, Sokiro Minamoto. So Minamoto loses a tenth of a second that time out. He will be very disappointed that he didn't get such a good start. Yeah, he will. He will. And what you can see, Pirapong is just lap, getting the laps in. 
the thing that amazes me about him is, is that I still don't believe that he's pushing at 100% at the moment. I think that uh, Pirapong was able to sit at everybody else's fastest pace. And then towards the end, he just finds that something a little bit extra. Yeah, that's been the, the pattern of his uh, victory so far. And of course, uh, as you mentioned at the start, Steve, he stands to equal the uh, all-time ARRC record of uh, successive wins, which is seven held by uh, Amaguchi, right? Mm. Which he's held since 2005. Yeah, so it's uh, a long time between drinks. Not sure if Hamaguchi's here this weekend to, to, to try and do something about it, but uh, not much he can do, really, because this man, Pirapong, is on a roll. And I guess the, the wild card attack that we were expecting uh, hasn't happened yet. Uh, I saw Hamaguchi comment earlier. He said, I feel honoured to have held this record for, uh, for 14 years. Well, it's not over yet. The, no? the uh, chequered flag hasn't dropped. It's still his record, at least for another uh, 15 minutes or so. Yeah. And then, of course, Kazma Daniel is doing a great job at hanging in there. A little bit of movement from the back of Pirapong's bike there. It's always good when you're a rider and you're sitting on the back wheel of the guy in front and you start to see their bike move around. It makes you feel a bit, little bit better, especially if yours isn't. If yours is stable, you think, hey, I might have a bit of a chance here. Yeah, that's right. And, of course, we have uh, plenty of laps to go, seven laps of this 5.8-kilometre circuit. Uh, that won't phase Pirapong with his uh, Suzuka 4-hour experience. Yeah, I mean, how many laps has he done around here? He's uh, done quite a few, I imagine. Yeah. Probably not as many as you, mate, but um, fair few. Yeah, well, uh, I'm sure that uh, he's set probably there is the Masashi rider that went down. Oh, I can't see from that angle. No, unfortunately, couldn't tell you who that was, but uh, back in the pits uh, way earlier than uh, they wanted to be. So, unfortunately, one of the uh, Masashi uh, machines, the Masashi Bunsu Honda racing team's bikes uh, out of this one and in the pit. Uh, too early for their liking, but uh, back out front, Kazma Daniel is looking attacking at the moment. Right on the back wheel. Perhaps it's not going to be a uh, wild card that uh, takes it to Pierrepon. Perhaps it's going to be Kazma Daniel. Yeah, well, this is motorcycle racing, and it's never easy to predict. So let's see. But we have seen this pattern before in the race. Uh, and now, just looking at the gaps, uh, it's 3.6 seconds back to uh, Adam Norridin in fourth position. And two seconds, almost two seconds behind him is the best of the Japanese wildcards, Yuto, Yuto Sano, who's on the Battle Factory Yamaha. Of course, um, Kazma Daniel uh, also hitting some good form at the moment. He got uh, a fourth and a third last time out at the Chang International Raceway. So uh, his confidence is growing all the time. And I think that every lap he stays on the back and this close to that man in front, uh, he really is uh, going to be looking for a way past. And look at him close up there. I yeah, he's that, good on uh, that turn. He's got, he's got a little bit more mid-corner speed at the moment. He can turn a little bit tighter. If he can conserve his energy uh, with six laps to go, he might be able to take it to Pirapong. But uh, it is that man back in third position, Minamoto, who's uh, 1.5 seconds off now. So still uh, catching slightly is Minamoto. So he could join this front group. Yeah, he's doing 13 sixes. Yeah, so he was 0.3 quicker last time, and that gap has visibly come down. I don't think it's over yet. Minamoto could join the, this group, especially uh, with six laps to go. Just uh, 0.3, the gap is yeah. uh, to Kazma Daniel. 1.4 back to uh, Minamoto now, back in uh, third position there. Yeah, half distance now. Of course, uh, Yamaha 1, 2, 3 here at the moment in this class. Up front seems to be the bike of choice at the moment. But I'll tell you what, if Pirapong was on a Honda, he'd probably be going just as good. I think so. The uh, I've, I've spoken to a couple of Honda riders who... Uh, tell me that the uh, the Yamaha is the, the bike to beat, but I think they're kind of beating themselves when well, they say it. You know, the old saying is the grass is always greener on the other bike. That's what they say. So uh, How long do you have to leave a bike outside to uh, make it go green? Well, when you're a rider, everybody else's bike seems better than yours, except for Pirapong. I bet you he's pretty happy at the moment. Uh, although, 
He is using more track now than the man behind him. Kazma is looking good at the moment. Just yeah. tucking in nicely, saving that energy. Uh, the only thing that he's got to worry about is Minamoto, who's uh, who's uh, right on the back wheel. Adam Noradin, though, uh, not doing what I thought he might. I reckon that was Helmi Asman that went out, because that's Azroy Akin. Yeah. Uh, of the right. number 20, so it could have been the number 634, who's uh, unfortunately gone out of this one, not proving to be lucky, number 634, this time around. Yeah, Steve, we were talking about uh, Pirapong's training. The other, the other piece of the, another piece of the jigsaw is uh, the people he's got in his pit box. His, uh, his mentor uh, in there is Daisha Kreisart. Uh, well, yeah. And... Uh, He's had some fantastic races at this circuit. He won two ARC 600 championships. Um, yeah, there's probably no one better than Daichi Chrysard in the pit box, is there? I mean, what a brilliant uh, uh, rider he was in his day. And uh, with all that experience, uh, if you've got a, a rider that does what you tell him to do, well, no wonder. Pirapong is where he is right now. Yeah, and these riders really look up to him as well. Uh, one of them who is riding uh, uh, in... Uh, 250s last year, and Pab Samun. He uh, actually carried Deshaw's race number on his uh, on his helmet. Every time he got on the podium, he'd point at it. Well, just to recap at the moment, it's Pirapong Boon Alert who is leading this one from Kazma Daniels, Sokiro Minamoto in third position, Adam Noradin in fourth, and Yuta Sano, the other Battle Factory uh, Japanese wildcard in fifth position. Another wildcard behind him, uh, Akuda, uh, on the Kawasaki, and one of the few Kawasaki's uh, in the field. Yep, it's unusual to see a Kawasaki in this class. They've got such a competitive bike. I mean, last year uh, they were so, so good. And, uh, yeah, it's really unfortunate that the factory Kawasaki team not here, but the racing is still sensational. And look at this. Kazma Daniel goes up the inside. He's using that tight line. Pirapong is wide. And he tries to make the move, but T's run wide. Pirapong strikes back. Welcome to the party. And look at Minamoto. Minamoto's there now. Yep, so now we have a race on, Steve. We certainly do. Minamoto will be rubbing his hands together. Sochiro Minamoto, can he cause an upset here? Yeah, and let's see if Pirapon can settle things down and get away or whether he's going to have to fight it out toe-to-toe -to -toe with these two rivals. Well, I'll tell you what's happening. Kazma Daniel knows that he's got company from the Japanese man behind him, so he needs to get past. He knows what's happening. Pirapong is just doing what he always does, but uh, I think Pirapong's in a little bit of trouble here. He's using more track than the other guys, and he can't hold that mid-corner speed. Look at that. He's uh, way, way wide there, and uh, they're almost running into the back of him at that part of the circuit. The rear's moving again. Minamoto now right on the back end of these two Yamahas up front. Yeah, you can really see it at that long left-hander at the spoon, and now they're all together going down this straight. Yeah, Minamoto's used the slipstream, not yet. He's feeling pretty happy. There's still four laps to go. I'll tell you one thing that you don't want to do if you're Minamoto. You want to make him move now, and he's gone up the inside, and he's gone past both of them, has he? No! It's Pirapong, good on the brakes. Great move there by Pirapong. Minamoto doesn't want to get into a battle on the last lap. He doesn't want to let it come down to that last corner, does he? No, he doesn't, no. He's caught them up now, and now he needs to convert that into another place or two further up. Well, I reckon that uh, Minimoto would like to make uh, two places in about four seconds in front, and he'd be happy with that. But uh, yeah. that is not going to be so easy, because uh, we know how hard that man in front, uh, Pirapong Boudelette, can fight. Yeah, he can. We just saw uh, Deisha Chrysler, we were talking about in, the, in pit lane, looking far more stressed than Pirapong looks at the moment. Once again, a bit of a tight line, runs wide again, Kazma Daniel around the outside. What a great move by Kazma Daniel. Complete... Uh, uh, bamboozlement there, he just got straight through, but can he pull away? I think he can, because Pirapong is running wide everywhere. He yeah. can't do anything about it. You're right, Steve. Pirapong does look like he's struggling with that bike. And Kazmit, well, now, when Pirapong comes around, he hasn't looked over his shoulder yet. I don't even know if he knows that Minamoto's there. So uh, he's going to get an awful shock in a minute when he finds out that that yellow number 22 is uh, right on the back of the group. Well, there's three up front now in this one as they head into the hairpin, and it is Kazma Daniel with uh, nobody in front of him. It's new territory for him now. He hasn't led a race for a while. No one to follow. What can he do? Yeah, he briefly got it in front of uh, Pirapong in one of the races at Ram, but uh, that, I think that was just Pirapong having a look. But now, 
as they come up here. Let's see how they do at the spoon this time, because Pirapon looked in all sorts of trouble last time. Well, he certainly did. He uses more track than everybody in there, but uh, it is Kazma Daniel who's uh, carried more speed on the entry, and he's got two or three bike lengths now. Minamoto's taking a different line too. Stands the bike up on the exit. And look at the rear end there of Pirapong's bike, moving again. Yeah. I think Hamaguchi is sitting back, and he's got a little bit of a smile on his face now because that record might stand for a little bit longer. It looks like it, and what a record to try and take away as well. Well, absolutely, but it's not over yet because Pirapong is so strong on the brakes into here. The final turn, the final chicane, where we've seen so many battles won and lost over the years. Heading over that uh, start-finish line again, it is Kazma Daniel, and he has pulled out a little bit of a lead now. 214.4.6 quicker than Pirapong Boon Alert last time round. Two laps to go, not much time left in this one. Yeah, so Chiro's sitting there at the moment. I wonder if he is going to wait until the last chicane. Well, it's a tricky situation that he finds himself in. Does he take the guaranteed podium third, or does he risk everything and go for the win? It's a very difficult situation for him because if it all goes wrong, no one will remember. But if he gets third, you never know what might happen. That's right, Steve, and I think, I think he's going to go for the win. I don't think he's going to be thinking about his place in history. Well, yeah, maybe not. I mean, everybody wants to try and get that first place trophy. But one thing we do know is that uh, three into one doesn't go. Correct. And Kazma has got that couple of bike lengths there. Oh, yeah, oh, they're still checking. there, Kazma. You don't need to turn around and have a look. Uh, you can be absolutely guaranteed when you've got a rider of the class of Pirapong. And Pirapong is struck on that. Oh, he's run wide. And Minamoto goes through. Pirapong back to third. Back to third for Pirapong. And he strikes back straight away, but he can't do it. Ah, uh, this is a good battle. And that, with a couple of laps to go, is uh, pretty much assured that uh, Kazma Daniel has got a pretty decent lead now. Pirapong is probably out of this one. Let's have a look. He's gone in there too deep. He's locked up the rear. He's almost uh, run into the back of the number 127 man, Kazma Daniel. He has to run wide. Minamoto says, thank you very much. Yeah, and now he's in a relatively distant third place. I think that he's going to have to settle for third position because I don't think there's too much he can do about this. And now Minamoto, I think, can smell victory. Yeah, in terms of, uh, in terms of the record, it looks like that's not going to go... Pirapong's way, so... Uh... Minamoto up the inside. What a great oh. dive. Can he pull it up? He gets in, he gets the apex beautifully. If anybody knows how to do that, it should be a Japanese wild card. Minamoto leads onto the last race. Kazma Daniel will not like this. That was a beautiful move from Sajiro Minamoto. It certainly was. And that point three of a lead that we just saw in Kazma Daniel's uh, board can be thrown away because he hasn't got that lead anymore. What will Kazma Daniel do? Minamoto out front now, giving it everything he's got. 214.1 last time round for him. 215.1 for Kazma Daniel. 215.5 for Pirapong. The man with the pace is the man who leads at the moment. But we know how hungry Kazma Daniel will be for the win. Yep, and he's chasing. And Pirapong settling for the 16 championship points. The third place will earn him. So Chiro, he's not going to give this up very easily. Well, who will be the only other winner in the class this year so far? Of course, Pirapong Boon Alert has won everything so far, hasn't he? Six out of six, but it's looking like it won't be seven. Yeah, out of seven. And in this series, unlike uh, one or two other international series, the wildcards do score and keep the points. They certainly do. So uh, these will be points towards the championship, and 25 points will be in a big bag of points for that man in the lead, but Kazma Daniel is not going to give up so easily. There's not much in this. If he can get a good drive out of here through the next chicane, keep that flow running and then get into the spoon curve. Uh, good bit of a bobble left for the number 22 rider, but he just holds a pretty decent lead. Yeah, he's got, this is his to lose now. Well, yeah, I mean, it could all go wrong. The thing with the Suzuka circuit is, um, as you're breaking into that chicane on the last lap, I've seen many people outbreak themselves, but it is Sochiro Minamoto with the Eno Speed uh, YZF R6 who leads this one at the moment. Well, he followed your advice, Steve. He didn't leave it to the last lap. Well, it's always more spectacular when you do it that way, but more can go wrong.
as they head down that uh, straight for the last minute into the 130R. He's got this, he's fast through there. He's tucked in behind the screen. The only thing that he can do is get it all wrong here, but he takes the inside line. He's hard on the brakes, he's tipping in. He might have run wide, he holds it. He knows he's got this one now. It's da Kazma Daniel in second position, but it is the Japanese, Sotiro Minamoto from the Agon Speed Yamaha. Agon Speed, who takes victory. Here at Suzuka in the 600 race. What a brilliant year for him. Kazma Daniel, the only regular to beat Pirapong, and Pirapong, great result, but I feel sorry for you. You deserve that seven out of seven. Not to be today. Not to be today, and uh, well, it's going to be a while before somebody gets a, a shot at seven successive wins again, so congratulations to Hamaguchi-san. Yes, uh, Hamaguchi will be uh, relieved with yep. that, and yeah. uh, I don't know if we've got seven more races left this year. I'd have to calculate it, but there's probably still another opportunity for him to do it this year. One maybe. more, yeah. So Pirapong did the right thing. He rode for the points. He started this race with a 79-point lead in the championship over uh, Andy Farid is Dihar. Yeah, where, well, Andy Farid. And he was, one of the, was he a crasher? No. Yeah, he's way down in 15th position, so he only picks up uh, one point. But uh, here comes uh, Minimoto. He just uh, got great drive out, went past Kazma Daniel, hard on the brakes, takes that inside line. Kazma Daniel left out to, to dry. He tips in beautifully, get there, gets the apex, flicks it over perfectly, hard on the gas, and says, thank you very much, I'll take that. And he gets through, what a brilliant uh, result. What a win from the man that you say has been in this championship a couple of times in the past. Uh, now he gets a victory. Yeah, that's it. By far his best result ever in uh, ARRC. And uh, well deserved, well judged. Well, the Hong Leong Yamaha Malaysia team can also be happy with their rider. Casper uh, Daniel, great result for him. Uh, his best result of the year too, uh, second position. So uh, Hong Leong Yamaha Malaysia can be pretty happy with that. Well, he beat Pirapong fair and square, and that will feel like a victory to him. Absolutely. You've got to say that uh, that team this weekend, or today at least, Works better at the setup because his bike was turning better. Pirapong's bike to me, you could tell he was in trouble early on. The bike was running wide everywhere, it wasn't holding its line. He had to use wider lines, and you could see the rear moving around too. So yeah, um, all of the signs were there that Pirapong was going to have a pretty difficult day. Yep, and the riders in this championship are really high quality, so you only need to be a couple of tenths off tenth of a percent off and they will have you and that, so that was a uh, really good work by Kazma really good work by Minimamoto well Mini Miyamoto takes the win here in the 600 class with Kazma Daniel brilliant in second place Pirapon Boon alert got to be happy with that Yuto Sano another wild card in fourth position uh, Adam Noradin fifth not as spectacular as last time out but nevertheless good points Akuda in sixth position. Seven was Amada Fifamaran. And eighth, uh, Reza Danica Renz. That's a really good result for Reza Danica. Good to see. He's making his way forward in this uh, class. Krichiporn, number 35, gets ninth. Pasawit Fidavarak in tenth. Uh, Helmi Asman, another good ride from one of our up and coming riders uh, on the 634 machine. Uh, 11th. 12th is uh, Sano. For Cruzi in 13th. Good to see him going well too. Javiolo Malloy in 14th, uh, Andy Fred Isidar in 15th, uh, Liam Taylor McDonald uh, a minute back, but nevertheless a good result for him in 16th position. Masai in 17th, uh, Rei Toshima in 18th, uh, Azeroy Hakim uh, four laps uh, down, as was uh, Ramdan Rosley. Hot Kota Akara, another non finish on the Motobum Honda CBR 600. 21 starters in this race. Uh, was uh, pretty impressive, 17 finishes. So there was a little bit of attrition, but nevertheless, it was a fantastic cap result uh, with uh, the Japanese Minamoto. You can see him there coming into the pits. What a brilliant result for him. A brilliant result. And the wild cards here in Japan have really enriched this class, haven't they? You got the winner, you got Yuto Sano in fourth position and Kayosuke Okuda in sixth position. Yeah, they've really shaken things up and uh, given guys like Reza Danica um, and like Helmi Asman um, other riders out there to chase and, and learn from. So good to see uh, the younger guys that have been making their way up uh, through uh, the classes and into this 600 class. Um, they're picking their game up and it won't be long before we see them at the front uh, racing against uh, guys like Kazma Daniel and Pirapon Bunalert.
Yeah, and it reminds us as well, because it's not easy to follow the JSB uh, championship, but um, it reminds us what, how much quality there is in there. Well, definitely. And um, from my days in racing, I know that uh, it's always hard to go to another country and race against um, the local riders because they know every bump, they know every corner, they know every braking marker of this Suzuka circuit. Uh, so they're always going to be difficult to beat on home soil. But right now, let's head down to the pits where Wheeling is with our ring winners. Thank you, Steve, down here at Park Fermi. So Pierpong Bunla, a third place uh, finish here in race one. It's a tough race for you. And towards the end, can you tell us what happened in the second lap where you had to go wide uh, when you were in second place? Yeah, this round I have some problem with rear suspension, but we we don't know we don't know this. But when less, it it problem, yeah. Tomorrow again. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, uh, Pierre Pong. And coming in second place today is Kasma Daniel Kasma Yurin. Kasma, you put up a great fight uh, today at the front. However, a little short of victory today. Share with us how was the race. Okay, first uh, all, I want to say thank you to my team, Hong Yamaha Malaysia, and to my company and crew uh, because uh, set up the bike. It's really good and really nice. I really, I really like. For the race, uh, I make a good start, and uh, I try to follow Tom because uh, I cannot uh, lead uh, because I cannot good have a good pace. And then I follow Tom and uh, also Tom the pace was slow. And then I overtake him, and then I try to my control my pace, and then uh, suddenly cannot. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, pass me and and I really shukur Alhamdulillah P2 Alright, thank you so much Kasma and picking up the race one victory today is Wildcat Soichiro Minamiyoto Minamiyoto, congratulations picking up a win here in the Asia Road Racing Championship obviously you had a slow start and you had to chase uh, both Kasma and Pirapong in front so share us, how do you manage to find P1? Uh, start very difficult for me uh, because uh, usually use tire no same because lift up many many times. Uh, so first three up four up I'm for scared many many times cr almost crash but uh, slowly slowly pace up pace up and uh, cat I caught the two rider and last two, two up I could. Uh, Passing to like that. Uh, finally, finally, I can win. I was, yes. So I'm so happy. Uh, thank you for team and my sponsor, my family. Thank you. Congratulations, Mina Minamoto. We'll see all three riders on the podium. Well, what a great result that was, and how happy was he, uh, Sokiro Minamoto? Brilliant uh, result for him. But uh, this is how it all happened. This is how. Uh, Pirapong didn't get those seven uh, wins in a row. Unfortunately for him, Pirapong got a great start, as he always did and does. And we thought at this point, Barry, that uh, it was going to be a Pirapong benefit. We were already talking about Hamaguchi and how it was uh, he was going to uh, not get that uh, trophy. Yeah, it looked very familiar to what we've seen in every other race this time. And now we see the two riders crashing there. One was... Uh, uh, Azroy, uh, Hakim, and you are, and the other one was uh, Wildcard, yeah, Ar Arakawa. That's exactly right. And those two guys went down early on. Unfortunately for uh, Hakim, he was out of this. Back out in the front, it was the number 26 who was leading with Gazma Daniel right on his tail. And we could tell early on that he was having some sort of trouble because he was starting to run a little bit wider than the other bikes on track. Minamoto at this point, we didn't know what he had because he was uh, two seconds back. We thought, boy, he'd have to work pretty hard, but work hard he did. It wasn't long before he was catching up to the group in front. Yeah, that was part of what impressed me about him in this race. He took his time. But Casper Daniel made that brave move up the inside through Dunlop curve, and what a curve to do it on too. The Pirapon was having nothing of it. But anyway, it was a, hey, welcome to the party. Absolutely, and it took off from here. Kasman knew that he uh, he could get past, I, I believe, at this point, because he'd seen a few times Pirapong do exactly what we've seen just then, go wide at this curve. And you can just see there the rear end of the uh, number 20.
six Yamaha just starting to move around. When Casper Daniel saw that, he knew that he was up for a chance. And then it was close. Minamoto did join the party. Pong though, strong on the brakes. Wasn't going to let him through that easily. He held the lap and the lead for one more time. But then up the inside, he tried to go when Casper Daniel went through and he couldn't do it. Oh, and found himself in third position for the first time this year. Yeah, he tried to fight back, but uh, at this point, Min Minami Moto, he'd uh, executed his plan and he was through to the lead. And uh, once he got in the lead, I'll tell you what, he wasn't going to fall back, he wasn't going to make any mistakes. This was the best part of his circuit. He went through now as he came through, and boy, was he happy when he came over the line, tucked in behind the screen, hands off. How happy is that? The Japanese winning in Japan. He doesn't get much better than that. 600 class and all the Yamaha riders happy. Three Yamahas on the podium. Pirapong misses out, unfortunately. Let's head down to Wu Ling on the podium with the winners. We begin the podium ceremony for the Super Sport 600 CC Race One. Coming in third place today, Pirapong Bunlet from Yamaha Thailand Racing Team. In second place today, Kasma Daniel Kasma Yudin from Hong Leong, Yamaha, Malaysia. And today's race one winner, Soichiro Minamimoto from Akino Speed, Yamaha. I'd also like to invite the team manager from Akino Speed Racing, Yamaha, to join the riders on the podium. We will now stand for the national anthem of Japan. We would now like to invite Mr. Hiroyuki Shiozu, the Director of the Facility General Manager of Suzuka Circuit, to present the riders with their trophy. In third place, from Thailand, Hirapong Bunlan. In second place, from Malaysia, Kasma Daniel Kasma Yudin. And our winner for race one today from Japan, Soichiro Minamimoto. And the best team award today goes to Akino Speed Yamaha. We'll now have a photography session. Well, there you have it, uh, your winner, Sochiro Minamoto from the uh, Akino Speed Yamaha gets uh, victory in Japan just the way that he planned it when he woke up this morning. Uh, not Pirapong's uh, perfect uh, weekend, though. Third place, got to be happy with that. He still leads the championship with a big, big lead, though. The number 26 uh, leads it with a, a whole bag of points. Kazma Daniel, though, moves up to second position with Adam Norodin in third. Andy Fared. Is it uh, on the number 27? Uh, Hon Astra Honda is in fourth. Azroy Keem in fifth. Uh, Ahmed Afif Amran in sixth. Uh, seventh is uh, Helmi Asman. Great result for him. Ramdan Rosley 
uh, rounds out your top eight on his one XOX machine. Reza Danica Renz on the Astra Honda. 44 points is in ninth. Tenth position is Pathowit for the Rivera Rack. And 11th is uh, Critchy Porn. 12th is uh, for Cruzy, coming up from the 150 class last year. 13th is uh, Yabia Olana Malloy. 14th, of course, is uh, Ibrahim Noradin. What a great ride he had at Tail and Bend. 15th is Sochiro Minimoto. Didn't take him long to make an impact. Uh, Liam McDonald in 16th position and 21 points. So a big, big haul of points for him. Well, if you enjoyed the 600 race, Wait, there's more. After this break, we'll be back with the big boys. The thousands hit the track here in Suzuka for the first time. Join us after the break.